Hi, I'm Alan Bresnick from Lyre Reading. I'm in Philadelphia at SCTE Cable Tech Expo. I'm at the Andocs booth and I'm speaking with Justin Paul. Hi, Alan. So, Justin, you guys just came out with some research. Tell us about the VCDN research that you did with Analysis Mason. Yeah, certainly. So, um, we've got a long relationship with Analysis Mason and we've done a number of business cases with them. And one of the things we realized last year was we hadn't done much research around the cable business and the TV business. Right. And we thought it would be a very interesting uh, use case for virtualization. Uh, and the position we're in at the moment is lots of people are looking at virtualization as a technology, but they're not really stepping back to consider whether there's an actual business case that supports that. And that's what we wanted to do with this research. So we, uh, we asked Analysis Mason to look at the business case behind virtualization of the content delivery network, right. um, what the impact was, whether it was a positive business case, and whether that business case was made up of OPEX savings or new revenue. Right, and what kind of results did you come up with? So the results were, were really impressive. Um, the overall result, looking at an operator of about 60 million households, so a, a good sized tier one, cable provider in North America, it was uh, $2.1 billion of net benefit. And that was made up from about $1.8 billion of operational savings and around $300, uh, $300 million in terms of new revenue opportunity, largely driven out of uh, cloud PVR, cloud DVR. Uh, and when we dug into those results in a little bit more detail, uh, what was quite stunning was the impact of virtualization of the content delivery network itself um, gave us something like a 61% operational saving. Wow. So, significant, worth getting out of bed for. Okay. Were you surprised by the results? Um, I don't think we were totally surprised. We had some good indications that the technology would start to deliver those level of results. But I think we were a little bit surprised at the, the actual level we saw. And one of the other things we brought into the research was looking at the use of virtual probes as well as a way of understanding how the network was performing uh, and whether you could use probes to actually improve the customer experience. Now, one of the things we found out was if you have a physical probe, you can't use it to probe a virtual network. It doesn't work that way round. Right. Um, so at some point, operators have to move to virtual probes. And we wanted to see whether there was a compelling case to move to those or whether it was just something you had to do and, and take the hit. And I'm pleased to say that we actually found there was a 35% cost reduction moving from physical to virtual probes and the additional benefit that you can be much more flexible around uh, the service level you offer. So you can use the probes to really ensure you deliver a top quality customer experience and hopefully reduce churn in the cable industry. So a better probe and at less cost. Exactly. So Justin, how can Amdocs help service providers accelerate their NFV move? Yeah, I think, I think there's a number of areas and um, perhaps the first thing to say is we're very focused on one particular part of the, the virtualization story which is the management and orchestration story, right. uh, so-called MANO. Um, we know from recent, uh, recent research that actually only about 10% or less of the, the NFV market is related to management and orchestration. Mm -hmm. But our feeling is that's the 10% that delivers all of the cost benefits. If you have an efficient orchestration of your virtual network, and more importantly, the hybrid network that most operators will, will experience, that's when you start to be able to leverage the power of NFV and SDN. Um, so that's the first thing we can do to help, help service providers. Any other things that you can do to help? Yes, yeah, certainly. I mean, one of the other challenges is around how you drive new revenue out of this technology. Right. And key to that is the ability to build new services. So the, the promise of virtualization is that you will be able to instantiate services in, in minutes or seconds. Right. Uh, and um, we, we saw uh, Cox Communications talking today about how they were expecting to be able to instantiate services in seconds and really have a big impact on the order to cash within their business. The challenge we have is if it still takes you months or even years to build those services out, um, you have a way of generating cash very quickly, but you've still got at the front end a very slow and laborious uh, process. 
So we've done a lot of work around how you bring on board virtual network functions and how you build the service, service that glues those functions together. And then once you've done that, you're able to instantiate those in it very quickly. So focusing on service creation, service development is a really important part for us of the virtualization story. Can you tell us about the partnership that Amdocs has formed with AT&T in the NFE space? Certainly, I can tell you a little bit, Alan. Um, basically, it's, it's a new announcement and Amdocs has been selected as integrator for AT&T's eComp uh, program, which is a key component of the domain 2.0 program they have. So it's, it's one of the three pillars within AT&T's business. Mm -hmm. You've got NFE, SDN, and eComp. Right. And we are the integrator but we're also involved in development of some of the components of Ecom. Justin, when do you think we'll see the first implementation of NFV in this space? Well, I think it's been an interesting year. We've already seen a lot of NFV implementations and announcements uh, right. across the industry. Um, what seems to be happening is people are starting at the edge and moving in. So we've seen a lot of people working around um, enterprise virtual CPE, use cases and we've done some some interesting proof of concepts and work around those right um, what's interesting for the cable industry is it's to a certain extent been a bit neglected in terms of use cases and that's one of the reasons we started looking at the virtual CDN use case to see whether there was a strong uh, cable or TV centric use case uh, and there is and I think in the future we're going to see more and more implementations towards the core network as people start to virtualize the core and even eventually we'll see some uh, use cases around uh, cloud RAN, virtualization of the radio access network. It's interesting that your research looks focused on the video space and on the residential video space because we've mostly heard about virtualization in the cable industry on the commercial services side. So um, it's interesting that you see a business case on the residential video, the residential side as well. And, and I think it's an exciting market, and of course for most cable providers it's, it's their core market, the residential TV service. Right. Um, and it's an area that there's a lot of consternation about, you know, the influx of over-the-top providers, changing in viewing habits, so very few of us today watch real-time TV. I think with the exception of sports events and some news right. articles, most people watch TV delayed or on demand. Um, and so the industry has to adapt with that, to that. Uh, and one of the other things we've seen around the whole cable industry is the drive towards uh, high definition 4K, 8K TVs is really pushing the capacity demands on those networks. So we felt it was a really important use case to look at and uh, we thought that our customers would be very interested to see what we had to say about the, the holistic business case around virtualization in the cable industry. Justin, thanks for your time. Thanks very much, Alan. Right. Pleasure. Yeah.